Hello, today I'm going to tie for you a sulfur parachute dry fly. Now this is almost exactly like one I've done in another video, but I came up with a, what I think is an improved way of tying things off at the end. So stick with me if you haven't seen this before. Um, I would like to put in a picture of what I'm trying to imitate. We're going to do this on a um, fulling mill size 16 50-50 dry fly hook. I'm going to use light speckled Coq de Leon for the tail some mallard barred wood duck flank feather for uh, the body. We're going to use the boot lace, and I talked about that in other videos. Um, we're going to use super fine dubbing around the thorax and wrap our post with a uh, grizzly hackle and tie it all together with uh, perfect hatch pale done in size 8, A dot. So while we're getting the hook in the vise and storing the thread, uh, let me tell you a little more about this. So like I said, I've done one of these flies exactly the same, except for the way I finished it at the end. And um, so I'll try and point that out and I'll try not to sound too redundant. And hopefully I get some other information in this video. Uh, so um, not boring you guys that watch everything I do. So we got the thread started. We stopped, used a a brown marker to color up the tag end and that's because I'm going to use that tag end to rib the mallard flank feather uh, for the body. So here we'll get a bundle of those Coq de Leon fibers, um, angle them a little bit and get them tied in. Now I make my tails a little longer than the overall hook length. Um, you, to each his own here. Um, I've seen everybody talks about shank lengths, but when I do that stuff, I end up with what I feel is too small a fly on too big a hook. So I go larger and longer on some of these things. So here we are with a bundle of those uh, mallard flank feathers, the fibers of a feather. Um, they match the sulfurs around here perfectly, and they're really large feathers and this is one of the best ways I found to use these. So we'll get our bundle tied in, wrap it back to where the tail begins, snip off the excess. And this is a good place to put in a uh, whip finish or two just to hold things in place and I am going to use the rotary feature. Again, this is boring if you've seen my stuff before and you'll probably skip ahead and there goes my watch time but uh, I really wanted to share this. So we'll get everything fixed. We'll grab that bundle of mallard. Um, as I mentioned in the last video, I'm going to use hackle pliers. Without the camera in the way, I probably would have just held on to the fibers and I would have been able to trade grips and, and do my cross wraps at the end. But um, So we're going to take the, the weaker fibers, or these mallard. I gave them a half twist there just to kind of keep them bundled together. If they spread out a little bit, that's about perfect. I want them to lay parallel on the hook. I want that fuzz to stick out a little bit. And we'll wrap and work our way forward. So we'll get the thread loose and the cradle out of the way. And here's that cross wrap. And like I said, it's easier to trade grips because it'll hang in the hackle pliers. And so I'll get a couple of those cross wraps and snip off the excess. And when I did that, I think I knocked one of those fibers, maybe two of those loose at the end. They didn't completely unwind, um, but it's not a big deal because we're going to come back with the, uh, the rib and hold everything down. So another whip because we're going to use the rotary feature to add in the rib. So there's my tag end. We'll get it free of the tail. It's tied to the uh, um, underneath. So when we go, the first wrap will go underneath the hook and uh, won't disturb that tail. And then we want to space these out. And three or four turns, five turns at the most. I think I got a little crazy at the end, but actually that's going to be covered up. It's not a big deal. It just didn't look right. And we'll get a cross wrap on our ribbing material and shorten the working thread and get that tied in as well. Work my way back to where I want to put the post. So 
So we'll snip off the rest of our tag end. Do a little primping there to make sure everything's pretty. And here's the sulfur colored strand of that boot lace. And like I said in the other video, this stuff, it might be trilobal. It's kind of shiny. It, it's a lot like the poly that we buy, but um, I found it to be the perfect color for some of this uh, sulfur stuff. So there I kind of did a wrap around one direction, a wrap around the other direction, use the hook to change directions. So it pinched that post in place for me. And here I'm going to wrap the post. So I'm just passing the bobbin around the back and under a, over a finger and, uh, and working my way up. I guess I'm going for about half of a hook gap here. Probably went a little high, but um, I'd rather be a little high than too low. If you get up and the, po and it, the post isn't formed near the top and you're trying to wrap hackle, um, it ends up slipping off that, the, especially these fibers. They're not the uh, most rigid fibers when it comes to post material. So I'll come in with a little head cement, get things in place. And we'll put in our grizzly hackle. Now, you guys are probably wondering, and I didn't say this in the last video, like why the speckled tail and why the grizzly hackle? And I think in my mind and from what I've seen and, and read and heard, the um, grizzly hackles, the speckles, that kind of stuff, I think they, they add a... They appear to they add what appears to be movement. So if you use just plain, you know, maybe a pale or cream colored hackle, cream colored tail, um, it is what it is. I think these speckled ones, um, because they're different color, they reflect light a little different. Um, I think they uh, simulate movement and are imitations that appear to be alive. I think will be um, eaten first. So. That's what I'm thinking. So I got the hackle in. I kind of wrapped it up to the uh, top of where I had it posted. And we'll get some of that super fine dubbing. Now, as I mentioned in the other video, this is a long staple dubbing. Um, as I pull it out, I, I tend to take the little bundles or pinches and, and cut them off, make them a little shorter, and they wrap a little cleaner around the uh, thread for me. So we'll make about a two or three inch noodle here. And use this stuff to uh, build the thorax. So it's about here that I realize that I can let gravity help me and let the long hackle and that uh, post material just hang down. And actually, it's not a bad thing to be looking at the bottom of the fly to make sure that I've uh, have everything covered underneath. And we'll kind of do cross wraps around the post. With the uh, last one, I want to go around the post and I want to go in the direction that I want to finish. And I want to wrap that post. I'm going to turn this hook 90 degrees in the vise. I want to wrap that post in the same direction, like over the top, the same way I wrap around the hook. That's what I'm comfortable with and that's how I like to do it. So I had to center the uh, camera, fly in the camera. So uh, that's what that fade was. But here we are, we've got a hold of the saddle hackle, and we're uh, wrapping from the top of the post down. I get about four or five wraps in, and I'm going to tie it off. Now this is where one of the conventional methods was to throw a couple of wraps on here to hold the hackle in place, and then whip finish around that. In fact, that's what I did in my last video. Um, but I'm going to settle on three turns there, because this three turns will hold about anything. And then here's my little trick. I take the half hitch tool and I wrap the thread toward me. Now this is kind of the opposite direction, but what it's going to do is put that thread coming across the top of the thorax underneath the hackle. And I think that's what we want. And I don't know, kind of, um, that seems like you don't see it. It's, it's up there on top of the hook. And uh, so I did a couple of uh, two-turn half hitches there. And then the th three-turn half hitch that I'm doing here at the end, that's essentially a three-turn whip finish. It is wound in the opposite direction. It came across the top of the thorax. Um, but it was a slick way not to move the fly, not to fight the post material or any of that. 
and just slip a um, essentially a whip finish right up under there and finish behind the eye of the hook. So we'll slice that out of the way. And this is another if I should have thought about it and my producer's not here. <laughs> I'm the producer. But um, I should have lowered the uh, raised the camera so that that was more in the shot. Um, but I trimmed the post and I'm going to just use one edge of the uh, scissor, the, the snips, and pull the hackle across to trim it. So because I did it this way, and here we are adjusting the camera, but because I did it this way, and I think we all do this anyways, I want to add a, a drop of thin head cement, and I like to do it both above and below the hackle. So here we are coming in. Uh, well, I did the uh, thread behind the eye first. And we're going to slip that drop in there, and you're going to see my shaky hand hit the dubbing first, and a good bit of it soaked into the dubbing. So I apologize for being sloppy, but once it dries, it's not a big deal. And then we're going to come back with just a little drop right on top of the post and um, let it run down into the, the bottom of the hat or the, the end of the hackle there. So that's it. But the big trick here, and for those who didn't see it, um, look at that section where I use the half hitch tool to tie things off because um, that feels good to me. I think I make a good solid fly that way, and uh, that's what I'm going to do for a while. So if you hung in there to the end and want to learn more about me, look me up on Amazon. And until next time, be safe.